Morning everybody, my name's Claire. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna try something that might work, might not work. I'm going to try a straight pour, but a triptych straight pour. I'm going to stick three canvases together, one big puddle of paint, tilt it out, and then separate the canvases. So what I'm hoping is to get a wonderful design, but split over three canvases. It might work, it might not. I'm not sure, but I'm really excited to try it. So let me show you the colours I've chosen and also I want to show you the canvases and how I've prepared those. So just to show you how I've prepared my canvases, I've got three 29 by 42 centimetre canvases. I've put them all face down and then I've hammered in these large push pins um, into all four of them. Oh, I've got one missing. I will hammer four into each. Um, but as I was hammering them, let me show you. Just, I have a really heavy piece of, um, I think it's a cupboard door, something from when we had our, our kitchen fitted, um, a really piece, a really strong, heavy piece of board. So what I have actually done is put the push pins in either side of the board so that when I'm tilting this, I'm going to be holding this piece of board and these shouldn't slide around too much because they will be, um, the push pins are securing them um, into position on that board. What I did next was I put the I leveled all these canvases independently on the floor on the worktop. I then put the board underneath, which you can see there, and then I've lifted it up off on the table on on this plastic box here. So I'm going to be able to put my hand underneath here and then tilt it. The next thing I did was I've just cut a piece of gaffer tape in half and pressed it on. I don't want it the full width because I think it will take up too much, too much space. So I've cut it in half and then I've joined the canvases. So the idea is that I'm gonna pull the puddle in the center. It's hopefully gonna flow over with not too much interruption. And then once all, all the canvas is covered, I can peel these up and then let, let the paint fall down the side. So they're all going to, to match one to the, to the next. Here are my colours. They're very simple, but very bright, very bold. So three Montmartre colours, gold, purple and magenta. And then Artina green. I think it's just called green. I can't see an actual name on it. OK, I'm going to call it Artina green and then Essentials Royal and Langnickel white. So I've mixed them all with PVA glue and water pouring medium. And I'll put the recipe for that pouring medium in the description of the video. I'm going to layer up the cup. I've just picked a pint cup size um, cup to layer up. Um, and this is the order I'm going to go with. So I always like a little bit of white in the middle, just a little bit, then gold, then the pink, then the green, then the purple. I really like pink and gold next to each other. That can look really nice. Green and pink could be an absolute disaster because um, green and pink mixed together are going to make brown. Um, but these paints are quite thick. Um, can you see the mounds? It's, it's not even pouring. Yeah, it is pouring properly there. But it is so thick and I'm hoping that's going to reduce the brown. If there is a bit of brown, it's OK because it will actually match the gold. Um, so to layer up the cup, um, I'm going to put just, as I said, just a little bit of white in the bottom, not too much. I've done a straight pour before where I've put too much gold in the bottom and it just meant that the centre of the puddles, were um, too much white in the bottom, the centre of the puddles were just too white um, and I didn't like it. So I've learnt my lesson, just a little bit of gold. I also quite like doing quite small layers in the centre because I think that means you just get a bit more detail in the centre. Now, should I put a splash of white in between the gold and the pink just to try and separate them? My instinct says I should. Just a little bit of white. And now I'm going to start slightly larger layers now. Apart from the white, I'm putting the white in, but I'm going to try and keep the white layers a little bit thinner because I don't want a white painting. And again, just a little bit of white, I think, between the pink and the green.
All right, that is one very, very full cup of paint. Right, what I will do next is put that to the side. There is a little tiny bit of paint left in all of these cups. So I'm going to water that down and I'm going to use that as a flow extender um, for the painting. So to water it down, I'm just literally just putting a, a squirt of water in. And then you can see it's just a little bit runnier. So I'm going to do that for all of these. Right, all set up, all ready to go. So I'm going to pour right in the centre. I'm going to just put down a puddle of white paint just to pour onto, because that will just help it to flow. As I said, I have no idea if this is going to work. It's very, very heavy, this board and these canvases. So yeah, even this is quite difficult. So imagine this is going to be very heavy once I've got a lot of paint on here as well. Just got a little lump in there. Right, so I'm just going to pour into that. So straight pour. Let's go. Right, it's down. Let's just tilt it back this way slightly. So the other paint that I mixed up, I'm now just going to pour around. Just make sure this is pressed down and sealed. Oh, it's already gone over there. So especially over here, I just want to get as much paint on the canvas as I can just to wet the canvas as much as possible because it will just help it to slide. Right, let's start tilting. I hope I've got a big enough puddle here. I'm starting to worry that I haven't actually, having seen this now. So what I'm hoping is that it's gonna flow nicely over that ridge. It does seem to be, although I would say I think it's um, it seems to be rolling over itself a little bit, which I don't want. So the point of putting the flow extender is that that doesn't happen. So I'm just trying to cover the canvas. So this just starts the stretch so there's a ridge between these two canvases and I can see the paint flowing over it, but what's really good is it doesn't seem to be distorting it. Here, there's a slight ridge here where that tape is, but it doesn't seem to be distorting it too much. This is so heavy. 
I don't know why I chose to use a, a kitchen door panel to use as my board. I do, I guess it's just, it was the right size and the right length. But this is so heavy. Right, it is working, but I've got to stretch this a lot. So I'm going to quickly mix up some more white paint. Right, one mistake I always make with straight pores is that I don't take my jewellery off, my rings off. So I was just about to have paint pouring over my hand when I remembered. A lot of people use gloves, but I just don't like gloves. I just, they just get in my way. Really not keen on them. Right, because I'm th I'm right down here, I think, with the weight, I think I'm going to go off these corners now. Right, I'm there. So I've got my arm mark <laughs> on one bit of it. And unfortunately, I've got a ridge of paint. Well, I'll show you in a second. I just need to, I think I need to clean my hands. Right, all three cam canvases are covered and I'm quite liking it. The weight of the paint is up here. There's not, there's not lots of excess paint now, but what I'd like to try and do is bring the weight back a little bit so that I've got some paint that I can tip off the edges um, when I separate the canvases in a minute. So I'm just going to try and bring it back now this way. There's not that much moving. I think I might have to leave it at that. and then separate them. Right, so this is the scary bit. I'm gonna lift up these bits of tape. So the tape has held really well because you can see that there's no paint underneath. So I used the right type of tape. Right, now this is going to be the difficult bit. Have I left enough paint on each of these canvases? So all I want to do is just tip this down so that the pattern then just comes to the edge.
Wow, it's done. This was such a challenge. It definitely didn't go to plan. Um, I think it works. I think you've got the continuity between the three pieces. There is some flow, but I had to end up tilting off to the top corners because there was less paint there, so it doesn't line up perfectly. There are bits that do that does line up, but I think I could have um, actually just done a lot more tilting from earlier on. Now, now I know that it wasn't going to ever line up totally. Um, so let's go in for a close up. Um, it's you can see all the sparkle. It's very shimmery. Um, I love this really pale section. You've the pale, the white and the pale green there. I think work, works really well. Um, I'm really happy that there's no brown. So the colours have held. They were thick enough to really hold their shape. So I've got just the distinct separate colours. I can see all the colours, which is just uh, brilliant. I was so worried about muddying colours. Um, I've had a challenge with the edges of the canvases. Here, I've had to patch up a bit where my arm hit the canvas, so I'm not happy about that. I might paint the edges. Um, and now this one, just look what's happened here. I think because I tilted over this one first and I put down that thinned down white paint, it's almost got like a cloud effect, like a pearl effect coming through. But instead of being really round pearls, they're very, very irregular. Um, I'm not sure I like them. There's nothing I can do about them, obviously. So I've just got to accept that they are a feature of this painting. Um, so maybe they do just add a little bit to it. It just looks a little bit, um, a little bit like a snowstorm, really, at that end. So it does kind of work. It hasn't gone to plan, but I think it could look okay when it's dry. I'm really not sure. Um, so time will tell with this one. So here it is dry. I'm loving it. It's crazy. It's mental. It's very, very dramatic, very busy, very kind of moody looking, really stormy looking. But I'm loving it. Um, you definitely got some continuation of the colour going across. So ideally, I wanted it to all blend perfectly one to the next to the next. It is a little bit. So it's blending there with the gold and the purple, a little bit there with the gold. Um, but there are other bits like this little pale section here is a bit offset from here. So it does match and it does blend and it does work as a three piece. Maybe not as well as I was hoping. So next time I do something like this, I need a lot more paint on the canvas. I think I was aware of that quite early on, the, what, the puddle was not big enough. Um, so I had to stretch it far too much. Um, but I'm happy with it. Let me show you close up. So here we've got the snowstorm um, and the snowstorm has turned into more purple, um, sort of pale purple snow. It's really interesting. It just, it almost looks like um, a galaxy with um, lots of little, uh, what do you call them? Bits fl flying through space. Um, so really interesting, really pretty. Um, um, the colours of work, there isn't any brown. Um, there is some a slightly darker area, which is very dark purple, which maybe is tending towards brown, but it's it's not. It's definitely very dark purple. Um, the colours have worked so well together. Pink and gold love pink and gold next to each other. And look at that purple and green next to each other. Wow, it's worked. It looks so, so good together. And then the third canvas. I think what I like is that all three canvases are completely different. I love this pale section. Look at those lines, those pale green lines. I think, yeah, all three canvases just look totally different. A bit more of the snowstorm there. Um, and then let me show you if I angle it, you can see the, again, the how iridescent this is. So I'm just trying to focus it. Oh, there we go how iridescent and shiny it is. And it, the reason it's so shiny is just because of the, well, the iridescent paint and also the PVA glue in it. I will varnish it and that will make it even shinier. But yeah, what do you think? Three totally different pieces that all kind of match, I think, all blend in. Um, let me know what you think. Please leave me comments. Um, please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Um, yeah, and let me know what you think. Great. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Bye.